Hello and welcome to Potter Watch from Page to Screen, episode 19. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Lucy. Today we'll have a look at what life at the Weasleys is like and take a trip to... Borgin and Burks? Huh? What? <laughs> Last time we explored the burrow. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's literally <laughs> that's literally Last time. Last time we explored the burrow. Um, <laughs> but before we begin, let's take a look, look into the sorting hat for our questions today. Elizabeth will have the Harry Potter question and mine will be completely random. <laughs> um, so I'll go first. Mm-hmm. Um, my question is like a, it's like a question inception. Okay. Um, but it is, what is your favourite question? to ask people like when you first meet with someone or like as an icebreaker or oh okay Mm. i'll go first because i i know mine because i i use them a lot okay i meet new people (laughs) and it also i feel like well i I kind of have two and they're good for two reasons because Mm -hmm. firstly i just want to know the answer Mm -hmm. secondly i feel like depending on whether they react to it you know when you ask someone a weird question and they just don't question it and immediately start considering it and giving you an answer and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. I, you are, you are my p- people. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So my first question is, um, I suppose these could be the questions as well. Yeah. Um, who is your apocalypse team? You have to pick three people. Okay. Who's on the team? And then also, what is your apocalypse song? So like, if the world's <laughs> ending and you've got about three minutes left, what song are you putting on to see the world? Oh, well, I mean, I hate to, to be cliche, but Bohemian Rhapsody comes to mind. Yeah. I, <laughs> or like I some like, kind um, of Queen song. Yeah, Don't Stop Me Now. Yeah, yeah. Is always, is always Or maybe like, um, <laughs> like, uh, what is it? Um, Welcome to the Black Parade would be quite cool as the last <laughs> that would song. Be quite good. <laughs> yeah. I would probably go Don't Stop Me Now. I just think that would be really funny. Yeah. Um, uh, I think uh, I do like Killer Queen. That would be cool, mm. like a nice beat to like shoot zombies <laughs> with and stuff. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I don't know what kind of apocalypse you're mm-hmm. talking about, but I always leap to zombie um, mm-hmm. apocalypse. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a Queen song of some kind. <laughs> Or maybe Mr. Brightside, just because I feel like oh, yeah, that's, that's kind a of good become one. just the soundtrack of everyone's yes. life, or yes. at least kind of our age, like this generation. Yeah. So that would be a good one just to round all off. Yeah. I don't know. And then Apocalypse Team. Apocalypse Team. I never have like a one set answer. I always no. Like, yeah, that's a tough one. I would Cause... definitely go. <sighs> Bear Grylls is usually on there. <laughs> I, feel like oh, really I didn't useful. even think about famous people. That's a good point. Oh, I, I didn't even think about non-famous people. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd probably go Bear Girls. Maybe I don't know. Can you do like, like fictional characters, or is it does no, it have to be real um, world? I, I think in this situation, it's like you have free reign of everyone on Earth right okay. now. Okay. Living. Is this like excluding? I can like stay with my family and stuff. It's just these are the no, people that I'm with. No. Oh. Yeah, everyone else is gone. Oh. Like okay. it's just you and these three people and you're just it's it's you fighting off the whatever the threat is. Oh my. Well I f- I'd feel bad if I didn't pick Roman and Matilda then. <laughs> I but guess I mean so. Matilda wouldn't be very Matilda useful wouldn't in be much help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean the alternative is her being dead. <laughs> yeah, now I feel bad that I, in all the years I've been asking people this question, I've never thought about family and friends, and no one else has ever thought <laughs> about family and friends. Oh. I guess that reflects well on you as a as an individual. <laughs> well, a full puff through and through, I guess. Mm. I guess I'm just not very imaginative either. I I never go to like the thinking out of the box thing. Mm. I think of like, right, realistically, realistically who would yeah. you be with, right? Yeah. I think I'm going to go, just just for today, if I had to pick right now, I'd go Bear Grylls, Dwayne Johnson, I feel like I should pick a woman. <laughs> um, you don't have to. <laughs> no. Uh, Bear Grylls, Dwayne Johnson, who else do I want? Uh, maybe just like Zendaya to look at before I die. <laughs> <laughs> Good shout. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. I'm trying to think if I picked famous people or like well-known people skilled mm. people who would i pick 
Mm. I don't really know. I'm not. I'm not very good with celebrities. Mm. Um, do I mean Dwayne Johnson is a good shout? <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like he's been in that situation enough. All his movies are just disaster yeah, yeah. movies, so he'd he'd know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my mind, with that, my mind jumps to Will Smith because of the, um, mm-hmm. oh, what is it? I Am Legend, is that the Apocalypse mm-hmm. one that he's been yeah. in? I mean, I really liked that, but, I mean... I would also... I don't know how someone... useful Will Smith would be at. Yeah, I'd kind of <laughs> want to pick someone just for comedic relief. Yeah, that's true. I mean, now I'm speaking like I'm I'm casting a film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean... If we're talking fictional characters, I would know immediately, but... Mm. Well, who, okay, fictional characters, who are your three? Okay, Yoda, straight away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thor. Thor, oh yeah, that's a good shout, Thor. Um, I guess I'd just pick superheroes, that's kind of boring. Maybe super villains. Oh, yeah, yeah. Although, if we're going by film logic, they usually lose. They usually, uh, yeah, that's true. And they usually will twist on the good guy. And if you're the mm. good guy, mm. assuming, um, yeah, I'd probably pick who Yoda, maybe Mr. Miyagi for some like mm. very hand wise hand. thing, but what hand to hand combat as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wise counsel and fighting all in both, mm-hmm. like, all in both, all in one. <laughs> Um, and who the third one? Who, uh, I'm trying to avoid Harry Potter character. <laughs> oh, probably Ang from Avatar: Last Airbender. Oh, yeah. Actually, he would be mm-hmm. super useful because, like, you know, I always go to like, um, oh, food and water would be really hard to get, mm-hmm. and him with his like water bending, he could right. like extract water out of mm-hmm. dirty water, and yeah. he could get food really easily with his like all his skills. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. So I'd yeah. pick those three fictional characters. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really terrible with knowing celebrities and mm. what they are good at and everything. Yeah, I feel like something like that as well, where pe- the people who would be actually very useful are not are not people who are famous. Like, yeah, most of the times, people who are famous are famous for like creating. Yeah. Are in some way like films. And they're or, usually like, useless in which everyday wouldn't... life. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, maybe I'd pick um, PewDiePie because <laughs> he's okay. played like lots of horror films and yeah. all the uh, films, games. And although he is a bit of a scaredy cat, um, he's his reaction time is insane. Mm. Um, I I recently watched a video of his where he t- he takes like a a human test, like a how oh, good yeah. are you at being a just a human mm-hmm. and one of them was reaction and his was like off the charts amazing um mm. so i feel like he's gotten like lots of good practice like target practice yeah. so i think pewds would be a good shout mm. bear grills is a really good shout of yours mm. foraging yeah. you know with that like food like survival. and survival yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah oh what questions do i i don't... See, I like I I don't wanna like say this to be particularly prideful, but I enjoy awkward small talk. Um uh. like like <laughs> I enjoy like, oh so isn't the weather horrible today and, and right. like yeah. where'd you come from? You know, <laughs> stuff like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I do like to, to hear about like where people are from. Mm-hmm. Like uh even if, you know, they're just from England just to mm. see what kind of background they have. That's usually where mm-hmm. why ask. Um, mm. Cause I find it very interesting, you know, like whenever somebody I, I first meet speaks, I'm always trying to place their accent and I'm terrible mm. at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so that's usually one. And like, um, you know, where you where your, oh, what's the word? like family history like Mm -hmm. geographically where are all your family from i really like to know that and i guess Mm -hmm. my other one mine is super boring um (laughs) is um what age they are i'm super uncomfortable if i don't know somebody's age it makes me really uncomfortable i have this weird thing about knowing 
um, actors' ages. Like, when I'm watching yes. a movie, I'm straight on IMDb, and yep. I'm like, how old are they now? How old are they when this film yep. was made? How old were they when it was released? How, like, yeah. Yep, I, I'm exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> Elijah Wood, during Lord of the Rings, always gets me, because he was like, <laughs> what? I can't remember now. He was, like, 17 or something when... What? I can't remember. No, the or nineteen. That, he was definitely the a teenager when they started. The one that blows my mind started. is um, that Kira Knightley was seventeen in Love Actually. What? And also in Pirates of the Caribbean in the first one, she was seventeen in both those movies. Oh wow, she really got a good year there. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Eighteen. Eighteen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he was like 30 or something. No, exactly. He just doesn't age. Yeah. Um, oh, so it's speaking really of hard. Love Actually as well, the kid from... I can't remember his name. <gasps> also I've in, seen like, him recently. It's runner. crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's so cute in Love Actually. Yeah. But he's like 14 or something in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's I nuts. mean, it's, for an actor, it's very lucky, but... Hmm. It must be annoying <laughs> at yeah. a certain point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have baby face, but I get it a lot for my height. Well, mm. I used to. I don't anymore because I've got Matilda. Right. Um, but I do all often get like young mum stares, like pity mm. young mum stares. <laughs> and I guess in today's society, I am classed as a young mum. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I often get looks that I think they think I'm a teen mum, don't they? Mm. <laughs> Um, but my face, I think I've got a 25 year old face. It's just my height. Mm, you're just short. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm, um, I'm five foot I two. As I'm well, a wee, I think as well with lady. age, because, because of TV shows casting like 30 year olds mm-hmm. or 16 year olds, people forget that like yeah. 25 year olds don't actually look yeah that old, yeah. you know? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think this is why you get so many illustrations, like in Harry Potter, where mm-hmm. they look 20, but it's like, right. no, they're, they're 12. In... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I find annoying on the original ones. I can't remember what mm-hmm. the who the artist was, but I was like, he looks way too old mm. and sensible as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, my, my ones are really boring, I'm afraid. But yeah, where where somebody is from, mm-hmm. um, and uh, well, like the geography of their life. So like, where have, yeah, if you mm-hmm. have if you've moved a lot, I like to know. Yeah, I like to know that. That's really interesting to me. Like, if somebody's moved like six times, that's crazy, yeah. or mm-hmm. even once. Yeah, and their age. <laughs> Very boring. I guess we don't. Ask, answer my question. <laughs> I'm 25. <laughs> and here is my exact home address. <laughs> well, I can say I I was born in Warwick, in Warwick Hospital. Mm. I was born in Cardiff. I always forget that you're born in Wales. That's yeah. crazy. I, I, um, I won't say I'm Welsh because Wel- Welsh people would hate me. <laughs> but... <laughs> Technically, <laughs> yeah. on my passport. Actually, when I was um, last time I was in an airport, the guy checking my passport was Welsh, and he huh. was like, "Ah, like good on you, or whatever." <laughs> You're like, I'm not actually. Yeah, well. I, me, I was very sure not to actually speak and just kind of laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he didn't hear my very posh English voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, hello. <laughs> yes. yes, I am Welsh. Hello, <laughs> <I'm> Gavna. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Okay, shall I? Um, oh, I feel like I've kind of. No, I feel like I've kind of <laughs> asked that before. What? What is it? The studio. Well, but in a different way. The studio okay. tour has contacted you with a prize draw. You win a choice of only of any piece of merch in the shop. What do you oh. get? Any piece. What do you get? I guess we haven't. I haven't asked this question no. before. We've talked about food before. Yeah, but and not like our favorite, the whole... like, oh, I think the one that I'm remembering is um, like, oh, is um, the chocolate frog one. Like, yeah. would you would you rather 
only buy chocolate frogs or never oh. be able to buy chocolate frogs again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, what would I get? I mean, it's boring, but I'd get a, a robe. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing I can think of that's like really I, expensive. And I, I don't can know if think I would of... ever be able to yeah. buy. Yeah. I think I might get like the replica chess set. Oh, okay. Like the really, like, it's like proper made out of like stone and it's yeah. got a marble board yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then again, Ooh, me actually, and Roman you know... have a nasty past with chess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it gives me like really bad memories. <laughs> not, <laughs> not that it was uh, terrible or anything. It was very silly. Um, but uh, on one of our dates once, I completely overreacted um, whilst playing chess. And it, the date turned a little bit sour and it's, it just wasn't very nice. <laughs> oh. It was completely all my fault, which just makes everything worse when it's like mm. all your fault. Mm. So maybe not. Maybe I would get a rope. <laughs> I, I mean, it's I actually might go for one of those... Um like Quidditch jumpers oh, actually I feel like yeah. I would potentially wear that and that's the same price as a rope and it mm -hmm. feels like I, that feels like um, oh, you know overpriced like I would never actually yeah. pay money for they're it they're like it's 70 quid like, yeah. aren't they although ugh, we've talked about this before I don't know whether I'd get the Hufflepuff or the Slytherin one mm. <laughs> you would look but way then, better in the Slytherin one exactly and I am quite Slytherin you, you I just, are yeah I, I think just, you're equal parts yeah no, we have talked about this before. Yeah. I, like, never shut up about it, but I think I am Slytherin, but I value... Yeah. Like, I value kindness over ambition. Yeah. And... But I, I still, like, kind of... Like, <laughs> if there's a loophole I can find where I benefit, sometimes at the expense of other people. <laughs> as long as they don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think I'd be with um, Hufflepuff and... Maybe every single other one. Like, I am Hufflepuff. And I, it's not yeah. that I don't value kindness and hard mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I've always ha would rather be brave and, like, yeah, you know, superhero I mean, vibes. The thing that is, Hufflepuff cool. is, like, sounds <clears throat> the most boring. But, I do, like, everyone should value being kind yeah. over yeah. being anything else. But it's yeah. so boring to say like, oh yeah, I value being kind yeah. the most. I'm an I'm an amazing friend. I'm nice. Wow, well, you're so boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you're yeah. you can't be my friend then, because <laughs> you yeah. obviously don't have the same values as me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably go Slytherin. Um, Slytherin Quidditch, Quidditch jumper. jumper. Okay. Because then, because then I wouldn't feel so bad about buying a Slytherin one because it was just like given to me. Yes, that's you true. Know? Yeah, that's that's my loophole there. Mm -hmm. I'd probably do the same with a robe. I think, as well, I'm really rubbish at chess, and I wouldn't like mm. display it anywhere. But with a robe, oh, although oh, is this I would just counting, like, is this counting like actual, actual, um, like collectible things that are, like really, really like they have like um film anything cells. that you would find in the studio oh, tour that you do, could buy like they, in any of the they, shops don't they do stuff that's like actually like from the films oh like props not yeah like little but you can but get replicas or the things that they actually have used no like actual bits not oh. like not like the cup and like big things but i swear you can get like i've like never heard of that before to be honest, but hmm. it wouldn't surprise me. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I'd, I think I'm going to stick with my Quidditch jumper, because mm -hmm. I think I would wear that quite a lot. Yeah, well. I think uh, that's true, And but for me, I'm, I'm good enough at saving up money that I think if I really, really wanted a jumper, I would get one. Mm -hmm. But with the robe, it's so frivolous that I would yeah. just never buy it, so I'm going to go with the robe. Mm. Between us, we'd we'd have like a almost a full... <laughs> yeah Uniform. you know i would love to get like um a prop one of those jumpers with the stripes at the bottom mm. i don't know why but i really love them yeah um and i'd love to get like go to like marks and spencers and get like a proper schoolgirl uniform mm -hmm. and get a robe a tie 
and one of those jumpers and just be like <laughs> full on that would be yeah. <laughs> awesome even the ties are like 20 quid yeah, aren't like they or something yeah pounds, something like that something ridiculous yeah yeah okay interesting <laughs> <laughs> um, what what would your guys's thing yeah. be <laughs> yeah <laughs> we would love to hear to hear yeah. uh, what your guys thoughts on both of those questions are and mm -hmm. if you have any questions for the sorting hat please give us a bell <laughs> There were a lot of questions within questions. There was. In that. <laughs> we had a lot of questions. There. Questionception. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, as we said, we're just going to be looking at some Weasley life for the first <laughs> part of this episode. So as we said uh, last time, the film implies that Harry and the Weasleys go straight to Diagon Alley, like the morning after Harry gets there. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we don't really get a feel for life at the Burrow, which is such a shame because, as we said last mm -hmm. episode, it's like... Pretty great. I, yeah, I don't think many people would um, pass up an opportunity to see more yeah. of like Weasley's life, yeah. Weasley life. Obviously, in the book, though, it's quite different. So um, I've got some um, little uh, quotes here to read out. It says, Harry got a shock the first time he looked in the mirror over the kitchen mantelpiece and it shouted, Tuck your shirt in, Scruffy! The ghoul in the attic howled and dropped pipes whenever he felt things were getting too quiet and small explosions from Fred and George's bedroom were considered perfectly normal. Mrs. Weasley fussed over the state of his socks and tried to force him to eat fourth helpings at every meal. <laughs> also, we have um, Arthur Weasley just asking about muggles at every, <laughs> every opportunity. Fascinating, he would say, as Harry talked him through using a telephone. Ingenious, really, how many ways muggles have found of getting along without magic. Which... It's something I never really consider, like, mm. that wizards, like, how muggles are really impressed with wizards, but wizards mm. pro possibly are more impressed with muggles, I would yeah. say, because it's yeah. like, magic just comes naturally to them. It's not like mm -hmm. a skill or anything, mm. um, although you can be more skilled and less skilled. Yeah. But, you know, everyone can say reparo. Right. Whereas in the muggle world to fix something you need a lot of skills to do it yeah. depending on the thing obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that i've never thought of before hmm. um we get another <laughs> i love these little interaction between harry and Ginny. um so it says the moment she saw harry Ginny accidentally knocked her porridge bowl to the floor with a loud clatter Ginny seemed very prone to knocking things over whenever harry entered a room Pretending he hadn't noticed, Harry sat down and took the toast which Mrs. Weasley offered him. Which I, I think, think that's, is that's sweet. Yeah, it's it's unusually understanding of a twelve year old mm. boy <laughs> to be like, I shouldn't comment on that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think this is like where we get Harry's like heroic side, you know, like mm. he's very understanding um, yeah. and very unassuming as well. Um, he just doesn't really, he doesn't mind that Ginny's like that, mm -hmm. but he doesn't pay any attention to it either. Like yeah. so many 12 year old boys would, would make fun of her or mm -hmm. be mean to her or something. But mm. um, In the film, we have another additional scene that isn't in the book, which is Errol crashing into the window <laughs> in the book. I like, I like that. Yeah. That addition. <laughs> It's got such good timing. Yeah. It makes me think of um, Harry in the night bus. Um, mm. the, ah, <laughs> That's such a fun like running gag as well. Arrow, yeah. Like crushing and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it too. Poor Errol though. Yeah. I wonder if they had to like put a PSA on the end of the credits like 
no elves were harmed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they probably have to put that in any in every movie. Yeah. So that's how they get their uh, Hogwarts letters. Whereas in the book, Mr. Weasley just hands out the letters at breakfast one morning. So it's a little bit more boring. <laughs> <laughs> the line about Dumbledore not missing a trick is taken straight out of the book. And so obviously they say, Dumbledore already knows you're here, Harry. Doesn't miss a trick, that man. But obviously, is it Mr. Weasley who says it in the film? I can't quite remember. But it's Mrs. Mr. Weasley who says it in the book. Um, I feel like it is either him or Mrs. Weasley in the film. Because hmm. it would be odd I for think, one of the boys oh, to maybe, say it. I think maybe Mr. Weasley says the first half and then... And then Mrs. Weasley says Mrs. the second Weasley half. Yeah. Mr. trick that man. Yeah. Something. That rings a bell. Yeah. Mr. Weasley doesn't, definitely says some of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we don't get to hear the, what the letter has to say in the film, uh, so I thought I would read it out. Namely, um, the book list. <laughs> it says, Second year students will require The Standard Book of Spells Grade 2 by Miranda Goshawk Break with a Banshee by Gilderoy Lockhart Gadding with Ghouls by Gilderoy Lockhart Holiday with Hags by Gilderoy Lockhart Travel with Trolls by Lil Gilderoy Lockhart Voyages with Vampires by Gilderoy Lockhart Wanderings with Werewolves by Gilderoy Lockhart, Lockhart And Year with a Yeti by Gilderoy Lockhart <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, I don't, I think it's in the films that it said, but for anyone who doesn't know, that is his entire literary works to date. Mm -mm. Um, <laughs> so we immediately get to see like what kind of person he is. Mm. Um, even though at this point, if you're reading for the first time and haven't watched the film, you have no idea that it's actually him. Yeah. So the Weasley's worrying that they won't be able to afford all the books is said very similarly to the book. But they omit that they're Lockhart's books. Um, mm. So uh, it says, this lot won't come cheap. The spells, but the bleh, the spell books alone are very expensive. Versus in the book, it says that lot won't come cheap. Lockhart's books are really expensive. Mm. So you don't Which really. Is, I I love that addition that Lockhart sells his books for mm -hmm. like above average. <laughs> yeah, price. yeah, me too. It, again, it just cements his character really mm. nicely. Mm -hmm. It's a really great introduction. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, I imagine for first time readers, it's like a, what? <laughs> like, he, yeah. he's the teacher? What? <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I don't know whether you remember it from when you no, were reading I, it. I, I don't remember at all. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't expect you to, because you, no, you were quite young. quite young. Yeah. In the books, Mrs. Weasley mentions that they'll that they'll have to get Ginny's things secondhand, and we do get a similar bit um, in the book to Errol crashing into the window, kind of the same vibe-ish. Mm -hmm. So uh, it reads. <laughs> so I don't know why I said it like that. Um, I I always feel like I go into book quotes with so it says. <laughs> mm, um, yeah. Anyway. Morning all, said Percy briskly. Lovely day. He sat down in the only remaining chair, but leapt up again almost immediately, pulling from underneath him a molting grey feather duster. At least, that's what Harry thought it was, until he saw that it was breathing. Errol, said Ron, taking the limp owl from Percy and extracting a letter from under its wing. He carried Errol to a perch just inside the back door and tried to stand him on it, but Errol flopped straight off again, so Ron laid him on the draining board instead, muttering, pathetic. <laughs> so this isn't the Hogwarts letters, obviously, because they've already got them. It's actually a letter from Hermione, so I'll read that as well. Dear Ron and Harry, if you're there, I hope everything went all right and that Harry is OK and that you didn't do anything illegal to get him out, Ron, because that would get Harry into trouble too. I've been really worried and if Harry is all right, will you please let me know at once? <laughs> she's she's just 
Great. But perhaps it would be better if you used a different owl, because I think another delivery might finish your one off. <laughs> I'm very busy with schoolwork, of course. How can she be? said Ron in horror. We're on holiday. <laughs> my sentiments, exactly. And we're going to London next Wednesday to buy my new books. Why don't we meet in Diagon Alley? Let me know what's happening as soon as you can. Love from Hermione. I like that she says love from. That's yeah. Nice. It's very sweet. <laughs> we get a little bit about Harry and the Weasleys flying as well. Something that I always like to read about, like how they conceal mm. it and stuff. It really reminds me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't want to like taint Harry Potter with Twilight, but um, <laughs> when the when the vampires want to play baseball, they always wait for a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm so that the baseball yep. smacks um because they're like smacking it so that hard they sound like <laughs> thunderclaps um yeah it gives me that that kind of thing have you seen the other day i saw um photos like behind the scenes mm. photos from that scene from the baseball scene of the first twilight film. i've seen like like without the blue tint and it, it was very unsettling because yeah. <laughs> it was like a quite a sunny day yeah. and like very green grass and they were all in like you know they had like normal coloured yeah. clothes on it was, it was very um uncomfortable yeah it is weird isn't it <laughs> i have yeah. i well i don't think i have it anymore but i used to have um catherine hardwick's um uh director's notes notebook mm -hmm. um but like obviously all put together nicely for um, a publicised mm -hmm. book version. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there were pictures of that in there, I think. Um, yeah, it is very mm -hmm. unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes into like how they have to like conceal the Quidditch, um, how they play Quidditch. It says, Harry, Ron, Fred and George were planning to go up the hill to a small paddock the Weasleys owned. It was surrounded by trees that blocked it from view of the village below, meaning that they could practice Quidditch there as long as they didn't fly too high. And then I love this little bit about the brooms as well. They took it in turns to ride Harry's Nimbus 2000, which was easily the best broom. Ron's old shooting star was often outstripped by passing butterflies. <laughs> And this is the bit that I mentioned last episode. I was like, oh, does that not count as underage magic? But then when mm. Harry asked about the car, they said, well, it doesn't count because their dad enchanted the car. They were just using mm. the car. So I wonder if right. that's the same as brooms, like somebody else has put the enchantment mm -hmm. on the broom. Yeah. And I wonder whether the older the broom gets, the more the enchantment wears off. And that's why I, the shooting assume... star is so bad. Yeah, I would assume it's kind of the same sort of deal with the fake invisibility clips yeah, of like yeah. the invisibility charm wearing off. Yeah, that's true. Kind of like iPhones, how they make iPhones sort of <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I I get the feeling that um, all spells are like that, that they wear off eventually mm. and you have to kind of update yeah. them. Yeah, unless it's something like like the the yeah. deathly hallows death's or like something that's very very coke himself <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah something very powerful yeah yeah i think i agree with that we get a slight nod to percy's love life again um <laughs> which is always <laughs> exciting so this is fred speaking he's not himself his exam results came the day before you did 12 owls and he's and he hardly gloated at all. <laughs> I love those little bits that they just, you know, don't have time to put them in the film, mm. but they add so much to the like general vibe of things. <laughs> like the heart mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Again, like in the film, obviously, they don't have much time to go into like just how poor the Weasleys are, but in the book, it, it's um, mentioned quite a few times. Um, so I thought I would read one of George's comments this time. So that's time Fred was saying it and this time George is saying it. Don't know how mum and dad are going to afford all our school stuff this year, said George after a while. Five sets of Lockhart books and Ginny needs robes and a wand and everything. Harry said nothing. He felt a bit awkward. I feel really sorry for Harry in these bits because 
it must be really conflicting to both like have lots of money and be glad that you've got lots to spend on nice mm. things and yet know that there's just no way that these people will accept anything from you yeah and it would be awfully yeah. patronizing to even offer mm-hmm. but he desperately wants to um mm. yeah um and it is also mentioned that um harry can only use this money in the wizarding world but but we later on sorry <laughs> this really annoys me i know, I know. I, yeah because <laughs> it says it says of course it was only in the wizarding world that he had money you couldn't use galleon sickles and nuts in muggle shops he had never mentioned his gringotts bank account to the dursleys he didn't think their horror of anything connected with magic would stretch to a large pile of gold which is fair enough but <laughs> Hermione's parents later on are exchanging their yeah. money for right. wizard money, so I'm guessing yeah. the same will apply the you other way do, around. Yeah. Not that the Dursleys would ever be brave enough to set foot in a wizard bank, mm-hmm. but Harry's just said that, well, their horror wouldn't stretch to a large pile of gold, so maybe they would. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, who knows, maybe they would pay someone to go and get it them, for them, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Not that they'd be allowed to do that. No. But yeah, that just really annoys me that it's like in <laughs> the same Harry's chapter. A bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the answer. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, Harry wouldn't know that you can exchange money. But right, it's just yeah. odd that this is not a comment from Harry. This is a comment from the narrator, i.e. Right. J.K. Rowling. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, Harry never mentions his bank account because he doesn't know but jk rowling knows Mm. (laughs) presumably (laughs) (laughs) maybe she didn't and then she just kind of thought that it would be a fun little thing to add hermione's Mm. parents and she just forgot that she added this in that's probably Mm. what it is usually these things have a very boring explanation (laughs) 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 <laughs> I also commented, it's no wonder that the Weasleys don't have any money. Going by the, by the vast amount of foods they eat, mm. food they eat, sorry, it says after a quick half a dozen bacon sandwiches each. <laughs> now, there is Harry. Hang on. Let me, let me get my calculator up. <laughs> half a dozen is six. I think I... I love this though because I love that Mrs. Weasley is one yeah. of those people who like shows her love through food. Yeah. Like my my mum's exactly the same. Like she, when she wants to show that she, is like you know cares about you and like wants you to be doing okay, she'll like make you. Oh some yeah, food. yeah, but it I think it just goes it is a lot. too far. That that makes forty two <laughs> sandwiches, assuming wow. that Bill and Charlie aren't there and. I'm, okay. They aren't. I don't think. Oh no, so Ginny! That's what? Wait, two. That's six times eight. I forgot, Ginny. Forty-eight. <laughs> so that's like two bacon rushes a sandwich, maybe. Yeah. So that's and bacon's quite expensive. Well, they have pigs, but like that's ninety. Oh yeah. That's Ninety-six <laughs> bacon rushes if you do two rushes per sandwich, and this is just mm. one morning. Like, <laughs> and you cannot perform. Can you perform um, like a Gemino charm on them or something? No, I don't think you're allowed. Not on you, food, like, I don't is think it? You can on yeah. food. Yeah. Um. But I mean, maybe they're having more than usual because they're about to go on a long trip and like, and like there is like a big day trip out. And they don't have know. money to buy them lunch or something. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's a depressing. Yeah, it's like, thought. come on, let's f- fill up. Yeah. Before you go. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, half a dozen no. though. It is. I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like J.K. Rowling does this a lot of like really over exaggerating yeah, numbers. Yeah. In the book. But it's like you know, at the beginning, M- Mrs. Weasley trying to force him to eat four helpings at every meal, and it's like mm-hmm. you have how many? Of, like five children there, yeah. <laughs> and you've like worried about your money, like mm-hmm. be at least be a little bit frugal you know what i'm you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah anyway um but i know that that is a big like debate among harry potter fans as well it's like i know a lot of people get really annoyed when harry potter fans 
moan about the Weasleys not being good at money management. They're like, oh, but mm -hmm. they're just trying to treat their children. And I go back and forth on it, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm of the opinion that you should be as frugal as possible. So when the time comes to do a nice thing, you can be mm -hmm. as um, frivolous as possible on the right. nice thing. So me and Roman always save a lot of money for holidays um, so mm -hmm. we can just splash out and stuff. Um, but mm -hmm. obviously that's just the way I do things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose with some people it's more of a like, if you have the money, you might as well use the money. Yeah. Like, that's kind of... And I guess that's what I suppose the, that's the Weasleys... Yeah, that's what the Weasleys kind of... Their thing is, well... Mm -hmm. It's just fly by the Quite seat now. of our pants. <laughs> I suppose as well, I suppose as well, they were kind of... They were the like beginning of their um, like relationship was in like wartime, wasn't it? So I suppose for them it's kind of the mentality of like, oh, we, we have it now, so let's like, yeah. let's, let's do what we can to be happy and to eat well. That's and, very true. You know. That's very true. Yeah. That's a really good point. I think um, that should be taken into account because like wartime mm. can really mess with you for a long time. Yeah. I know that um, like... my grandma would used to eat sheep's brains on toast because you'd eat every single part of the animal because mm. they just didn't have enough. Um, and she mm. continued to eat it. I don't know whether she actually, maybe <laughs> she liked it. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but... Um, it was it was like a running gag in our family that oh grandma used to eat sheep's brains on toast. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it was a fairly normal thing to do, but she kept oh. on doing it afterwards, um, mm. just because she was in that mindset. Mm. <laughs> yeah, good point. That's why I, that's why I'm glad that we're doing it together, <laughs> <laughs> doing this together even. So, Mr. Weasley uh, in the book asks Harry about muggle travel after it's mentioned that Harry's never travelled by flu powder before. <laughs> He's never travelled by flu powder, said Ron suddenly. Sorry, Harry, I forgot. Never, said Mr. Weasley. But how did you get to Diagon Alley to buy your school things last year? I went on the underground. Really, said Mr. Weasley eagerly. Were there escapators? How exactly... Not now, Arthur, said Mr. Sweetie. <laughs> I love it. Escapators. He's so cute. Mm. <laughs> I love the bit in um in the it's in the fifth movie, isn't it? Um where that he goes on the underground with Oh yeah. With Harry. Yeah, and he's and he like gets tries on to like, the... tap the machine with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh that that's yeah. like I imagine what a five-year-old must feel like on their first time, right. like, or a child on their first time in the underground, like, yeah. ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the Weasleys give Harry all sorts of, like, crazy advice. Well, not crazy advice, good advice, but just so much mm. advice. Mm -hmm. The And with no, like, further <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So the advice is speak clearly, get out at the right grate, Keep your elbows tucked in. Keep your eyes shut. Don't fidget. Don't panic and get out too early. <laughs> so it kind of flusters him. And in the film, it really annoys me that in the film, he just looks like a complete mm. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just says all oh, diagonally. Just, you know. Diagonally. <laughs> Yeah, um, I hate it. Yeah, me too. I, I love this film, but this is like the worst bit. Yeah. Uh, in the book, though, it explains um, that he doesn't speak clearly because when he opens his mouth, he's literally standing in a fire. So he immediately mm -hmm. swallows a lot of hot ash, which, yeah. ouch, by the way. Yeah. And that makes more sense. Yeah. Although I do love the line, what did he say to Diagonally. I thought he I did. did. <laughs> yeah. Like, I do love that as well. I, I, can, I can kind of let it slide just for that, <laughs> yeah. that moment afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Again, like, um, man, I still can't remember the guy who plays Arthur Weezy's, um Mark. Mark. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> I 
I was gonna. I was trying to think. This Mark and Julie, they do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do. Look at us on first name basis with our pals, <laughs> Mark and Julie. <laughs> Mark and Julie does sound like that couple who lives in the street who come over for a cup of tea every now and then. Yeah. Again. Yeah, it does. Mark and Julie. <laughs> it really mm. does. It sounds like they would be like in a Beatles song, you know, like. You know, in like Obladi Oblada, it mm. kind of sounds like that kind of um, vibe <laughs> of a name. Yeah. So yes, he swallows a lot of hot ash, and he says diagonally because he's coughing up ash. Mm. Oh, in the film, we don't really get to experience with Harry what traveling by flu powder is really like, which is understandable. I don't know how they would have done it in the film. Mm. And it's just like an unnecessary extra. Yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah. But obviously, as always in the book, we get a little bit of insight into it. So I thought I'd read that as well. It says, It felt as though he was being sucked down a giant plug hole. He seemed to be spinning very la- fast. The roaring in his ears was deafening. He tried to keep his eyes open, but the whirl of green flames made him feel sick. Something hard knocked his elbow and he tucked it in tightly. Still spinning and spinning, now it felt as though cold hands were slapping his face. Squinting through his glasses, he saw a blurred stream of fireplaces and snatched glimpses of the rooms beyond. His bacon sandwiches were churning inside him. He closed his eyes again, wishing it would stop, and then he fell face forward onto cold stone, and he felt his glasses shatter. I hear I hear a lot of people saying this, but I feel like um, the flu powder journey would be such a cool um theme for a a ride at universal Mm. studios yeah kind of like Like, um the disney tower of terror like a drop ride mm, but spinning as well yeah there's there's a ride at alton towers that is um it's it used to be a sonic ride i don't think it is a sonic themed ride anymore but you're yeah (laughs) yeah um (laughs) and you're on a track and it's like uh, two pe- two lots of two people, mm-hmm. like two pairs mm-hmm. of people back to back on oh, a yeah. circular thing, and you like go around the track and like spin around. Oh, okay. That'd be so cool, and you could have like glimpses of like fireplaces into places you know, and like yeah, you're like oh, there's a fireplace. You know, I think that would be really that would cool. be cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess they like to do like theming really strongly. It'd yeah. be quite hard to do really good, effective yeah. theming on that one. Mm-hmm. But you could like the queue. The queue could be like the Weasley's um, fireplace, and then when you like get through, go through the gift shop. The gift shop at the end could be like Nocturne Alley themed. Yeah, um, yeah. Something like that because they like to do like. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, the gift shop could be like. Like, you could come out through Borgen and Burks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be so that would cool. Be really cool. <laughs> yeah. Harry, Speaking of Borgen and Yeah, Burks. <laughs> Harry ends up in a shop called Borgen and Burks. I'm pretty sure the name is omitted from the film. I don't think mm-hmm. they say it. So, yeah. yeah. They call him Borgen, don't they? In the film, I think. He doesn't see. He doesn't see unless you're talking about oh, sorry. the I'm, uh, yeah, I'm talking deleted about the scene. scene. Yeah, and in which but case, yeah. yes. No, in the in the film, he just walks out. Yeah. The if you if you don't watch it with the delete, well, you can't watch it with the deleted scene because it's not an extended mm. version. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really wish they would bring one out. Yeah. But yeah, don't watch the deleted scene. Yeah, you just don't get anything. I think. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's Borgin and Burks, named after the two founders of the shop mm. um yep in nocturne alley and that's where i hand over to lucy thank you very much <laughs> so <laughs> um, thank you thank you to to start off uh this borgen and burks section <laughs> there is just a little uh, description of mm. of borgen and burks in the book it says a glass case nearby held a withered hand on a cushion a blood-stained pack of cards and a staring glass eye. Evil-looking masks leered down from the walls, an assortment of human bones lay upon the counter and rusty, spiked instruments hung from the ceiling. Even worse, the dark, narrow street Harry could see through the dusty shop window was definitely not Diagon Alley. Mm-hmm. The sooner he got out of here, the better. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I mean, and then in the film, it's it's kind of as described. It's a little dingy, yeah. I think they did it spot shop. on. I think they got it perfectly. Mm. Everything's yeah. just dirty and black and dingy and dusty. Yeah, and really like you immediately get a vibe of danger. Like, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Harry in the books is not stupid enough to just go around <laughs> touching strange artifacts. This, um, like so it's a fun seeing... like oh jump scare in the film, but mm -hmm. I, it annoys me. Like, why would he do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, the scene in the film where what we can assume is the hand of glory. Um, grips Harry's hand is is added it's not in the book. I quite like it. I think it's quite fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a, like a fun little moment. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always it, reminds it really me of um, that bit in Lord of the Rings where Bilbo says, "I think this will be a night to remember," and then it goes to like fireworks, <laughs> and it always yeah. makes me jump every time. <laughs> and in Harry Potter yeah. and the Chamber of Secrets, because I rarely watch it. It makes me mm. jump every single time. Mm -hmm. You know it's coming, but you're never sure yeah. quite, quite when. Yeah. yeah, I do think it is good, though, at establishing that, like, yeah, this is definitely... Because in the book, you can have Harry being like, this was not a good place he yeah. wanted to get out. But it's like, oh, okay, this is, a, this is like... Well, this is a this shop is where the things fight back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So... Um, we'll um, compare the next part to a deleted scene, as I was saying, um, that we'll link in the description. Um, without this deleted scene, Harry just leaves the shop and that's the end of it. But in the deleted scene, Harry sees Draco outside of the shop while he's in the Hand of Glory's clutches. Um, and in the book, Harry sees him when he's trying to leave the shop. Mm. Harry then hides in a cabinet and doesn't pull the door entirely shut, which is perhaps one of the most extreme examples of foreshadowing that is in the whole series. Um, <laughs> this excites it's... me so much. <laughs> 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 um, because it's the vanishing cabinet, which you don't see for another four books. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And in the deleted scene, the cabinet is shown to be um, a crushing cabinet, which is mm. a torture device that slowly crushes the victim to death um, because J.K. Rowling hadn't revealed that it's the vanishing cabinet mm. yet. By the time the movie was released, so actually it's a really good thing that they deleted the scene because otherwise they would have been stuck with that weird looking <laughs> cabinet. <Yeah. laughs> Where did you get that it was a crushing cabinet? Was that... Uh, does it... it was on the wiki, but oh, okay. they they... They had like evidence of um, pictures of like actual old... crushing cabinets. Right, right. Yeah, because no, they're a real ask, thing. Is it like a... Yeah, it's, right. it's a real okay. thing that they actually used to use for torture. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it, it wasn't magic or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah. there was a well, there was a mechanical element to it that when you shut the door, it would mm -hmm. automatically start crushing you to death. And there was no way of opening the door um, afterwards. Oh. Um, yeah, so in both instances, it is absolutely vital that Harry does not shut the door. <laughs> I thought I thought in the in the deleted scene he does close the door though. No, it I and he's like it shows you can kind of see it. I watched I rewatched it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Um the only bit that's it's just kind like of closed too. Yeah. But not he actually. pulls it to yeah. The only bit that's kind yeah. of um ambiguous is when Lucius uh Draco goes to like reach out to touch the cabinet and Lucius mm -hmm. slams his cane on the door. But I yeah. don't know whether that actually shuts the door. Um, mm. Well, I assume he's... not because Harry's not dead. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, because obviously in the in the book he's um, he's like looking through the gap, uh -huh, isn't he? Yeah. Whereas in the film he's you don't see like looking through like the eyes of the oh the yeah, eyes of, of the face. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the in the cabinet, mm -hmm. um, which is really I really love that shot. Yeah, it's lovely from outside where you see his eyes through and then they like disappear mm -hmm. and then he comes out. I think it's quite cool. Yeah. Um, um, so I do like um, as well the the bit in the deleted scene. Obviously, it's not in the book, but when he's like hold when he's in the hand of glory, and he sees mm -hmm. Draco, and it's like it's really tense. Um, yeah. For a for a few seconds there, 
it's a mm-hmm. it's a really worthwhile scene to watch. I I'm really sad that they didn't include it. Um, yeah. Well, I I am long term. I am glad, obviously, because of the vanishing cap. Oh page, yeah, but true. It, it but they was, could have um, changed it easily. Yeah, I guess they they do that a lot with random mm-hmm, stuff. Yeah. But I I feel like they they probably would have changed it anyway. But I feel like it would have lost that that um like for film viewers it would have lost that kind of it would be like oh that's that's the uh-huh. cabinet Harry was in the first you know yeah that's true um, I mean they didn't get that anyway no but you don't still. get that at all because he doesn't <laughs> um, go into any cabinet no but... exactly but um, yeah so we also get Lucius Malfoy's first introduction um, in the book it says the man who followed could only be his father he being Draco he had the same pale pointed face and identical cold grey eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what he looks like. And um, I mean, he's just perfect. Yeah, the cast. I mean, all the casting is amazing, but yeah, um, Jason Isaacs is is particularly good. Good old Jason Isaacs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the deleted scene takes Lucius's line: "Touch nothing, Draco." Um, straight from the book and in the film Draco seems to be much more <laughs> polite than he is in the book because or at least kind of scared yeah. I suppose um, because he says yes father but in the book he answers with I thought you were going to buy me a present <laughs> um, I, but, I don't like how the films like seem to want to perpetuate this really well, not not nice because he's not nice in the films, mm. but like mm-hmm. they seem to want to shed him in as good a light as possible. Right. I don't get they it. They wanted to give him a redemption. Yeah, but he has a good the series. Yeah, he has an all right dimen- d- d- dimension. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I can't I can't think of what it's actually. Redemption. Thank you, redemption. <laughs> anyway, you know. Yeah. And I think true. the redemption is a lot more like worthwhile because he's such right, because he's a horrible person yeah and he's not exactly good at the end of his redemption but mm-hmm. he stops being so bad mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um, so yeah I, i'm not sure about that but in the book draco complains about harry's fame after lucius promises <laughs> to buy him a new racing broom um i love says, this What's the good of that if I'm not in the house team? Said Malfoy, looking sulky and bad-tempered. Harry Potter got a Nimbus 2000 last year. Special permission from Dumbledore so he could play for Gryffindor. He's not even that good. It's just because he's famous. Famous for having a stupid scar on his forehead. (laughs) Malfoy bent down to examine a shelf full of skulls. Everyone thinks he's so smart. Wonderful Potter with his scar and his broomstick. (laughs) You have told me this at least a dozen times already, said Mr. Malfoy. (laughs) Um, I love that the last line that implies that Draco's just he at does home, is just complaining about Harry's whining about time. Harry. All the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. It it really shows like I feel like this is one of the worser traits of Slytherin is that yeah. you're just more inclined to just complain about something instead of actually doing something about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that is, yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> me too, me too. It's like you like complaining and... I do love don't... a good moan. Yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes I'll be complaining about school and then mum and dad will be like, oh, I'll email someone and I'm like, no. Like, I just want to complain at you. I just want to complain about yeah. school. <laughs> I don't want actually to change. (laughs) Yeah, that would be boring. (laughs) In the deleted scene, Borgin's greeting is taken almost exactly from the book. What did you think of Borgin in the deleted scene? What did you think of his, uh, you know... His his choices? Yeah. (laughs) I thought he was was fine, like, as as a side character, you know. It really um, jarred me at first, because he's very over the top and very slimy mm. like and his accent is really weird as well mm. but after watching the deleted scene a few times to write the script um mm. i quite enjoyed it i must say mm. i think the actor I think, is I mean, quite, quite talented. i think it's supposed to be quite like humorous yeah. and mm. like a goofy yeah like the the first two like they're like family movies and yeah. it's like a it's like a fun weird little 
like a kooky mm-hmm. side character rather than like a sinister. Well, I, I guess he's not really that sinister in the book. He's just a normal guy. Yeah, yeah. He's just he just has a shop that's a bit dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When when Lucius tells Borgin that he's selling in the deleted scene, he asks Draco to present a black box. Um, but in the book, he takes out a piece of parchment for Borgin to read, and that presumably has a list of the items Lucius wants to sell. Lucius is selling because he thinks he might get in trouble if the Ministry decides to raid his house. He uh, says, I have a few uh, items at home that might embarrass me if the Ministry were to call. And then he goes on to say, I have not been visited yet. The name Malfoy still commands a certain respect, yet the Ministry grows ever more meddlesome. There are rumours about a new Muggle Protection Act. No doubt that flea-bitten, muggle-loving fool Arthur Weasley is behind it. <laughs> this um, is really I've... nice, like, trickling in that he always moans about Arthur, and so this is where mm-hmm. Draco gets the moaning about other people all the time as well. Like, they're both exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sorry. No, it's it's exactly that of like lump behaviour kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as, as and then he goes on to say, and as you can see, certain of these poisons might make it appear. Yeah. I understand that, sir. Of course, said Mister Borgen. Let me see. Also added to the scene, Borgen sees an item in the box that interests him a lot, and he exclaims, "Look at that!" And Lucy tells him it's not for sale, and Borgen says, "I understand. It has unique qualities. One wouldn't want to see it falling into the wrong hands." This really bugs me. It's like, why would you bring it to the shop? I know. Planning to sell it. I know, and I mean, the idea of bringing the box is just odd um, to yeah. me, anyway. Like, those are all of your unwanted items <laughs> like yeah. you've been a follower of Voldemort for years mm. and mm. you have all of your unwanted items in this small box yeah. anyway yeah. but yeah um, it's weird like like are you using it as a handbag and it just happens to be in <laughs> what are you doing yeah. yeah no it's it's strange yeah I'm um, glad that that is not just anywhere in the book because yeah. i can excuse the film a little bit but in the book it's like come on you have years to write these things yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the book as we are saying none of this happened and oh yeah sorry Draco <laughs> <laughs> interrupts the two of them by asking about the hand of glory he says can i have that interrupted Draco, pointing at the withered hand on its cushion. Ah, the hand of glory, said Mr. Borgin, abandoning Mr. Malfoy's list and scurrying over to Draco. <laughs> Insert a candle and it gives you light only to the holder. Best friend of thieves and plunderers, your son has fine taste, sir. <laughs> I love that bit of foreshadowing as well, because he uses mm. the hand of glory in six? Is it six that he uses it in, or seven? Um, I can't six, remember. I think six, it's six maybe. when he's leading yeah. the Death Eaters around or something. Right. I can't remember. I yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, in the book, they haggle over how much the list of items is worth, while Draco gets steadily co- closer to Harry in the cabinet. But in the deleted scene, Lucius reaches over to the box where Borgin keeps his money, takes a stack of gold coins, and says, "You can keep the box." Um, Draco goes this annoys to me so much. Like, and don't touch his money, you weirdo. His cane on the door, and says, "What did I say?" And Draco answers, "Touch nothing, Draco." <laughs> yeah, sorry, I kind of spoke over you. No, that's okay. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> it, it is. I think it's like a, a little, like, like oh, why? Know. Like, <laughs> you might okay. be the most awfulest person ever, mm-hmm. but nobody would do that. <laughs> yeah. Who would yeah. do that? Just reach <laughs> over. I'll take this piece of the stack Although, of money. Borgin in the commotion, he does reach the stack of gold that Malfoy took and yeah. um, takes a coin, Slips off, a coin the off the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Revenge. In the book, they also mention Hermione. Um, so that's all in the deleted scene. Yeah. So that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets confusing um, going back and forth. Yeah. Um, in the book, 
But as I said, I mentioned Hermione. Um, Draco says, the teachers all have favourites. That Hermione Granger. I would have thought you'd be ashamed that a girl of no wizard family has beat you in every exam. Snapped Mr. Malfoy. Which I like that is... Harry is like, ha, said Harry under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> that bugs me though. Like, why are you saying anything under your breath? <laughs> I know, no, why would you risk it? <laughs> <laughs> Eat that, Malfoy. Oh, it's I so caught stupid. you. Die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on. Um, no, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's left a little bit ambiguous in the deleted scene as to whether Borgin was genuinely happy to see Lucius or not, but in the book it's quite clear as Harry hears him mutter after Malfoy leaves, good day yourself Mr Malfoy, and if the stories are true you haven't sold me half of what's hidden in your manor. <laughs> Muttering darkly Mr Borgin disappeared into a back room. I do think in the deleted scene there's more of like a bit of a dirty look he gives him but it's, yeah, but it's, it's not really... It, as it's explicit. like just his general expression. <laughs> <laughs> it's like true. resting bitch face, but resting, resting. Borgin. <laughs> Borgin. <face. laughs> uh, RB, RBF actually stands for resting Borgin. Face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the um, actual <laughs> thing that all was, along. That was how it began. <laughs> yeah. Um, upon leaving, Harry sees the creepy witch in both the book and the film. The film takes her line again. Not last time, my dear. Um, <laughs> Let me help you find book. the way back. <laughs> in the book, she's holding a tray of whole human fingernails, which Charming. is a lovely, a lovely little moment that I actually really enjoy. Uh, then, <laughs> I course, do like Hagrid... the detail, but it always, like, my mind immediately goes to, how did she acquire the fingernails? <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. The fact they're whole. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, then of course Hagrid finds Harry and takes him back to Diagon Alley. What are you doing, Harry? Skulking where... down Nocturne Alley. That's where we leave off. So, Marauder's Map this time. The only new place is Borgin and Burks. Mm -hmm. And Nocturne Alley. So, the only thing I really have to say is I'm pretty sure... Nocturne Alley is the same set, or at least the same set pieces as Diagon Alley, just redressed. Oh, oh, okay. I think. I haven't found that confirmed anywhere, but I feel like I remember either being told at the studio tour or reading somewhere. I think it's the same, like the shop fronts look the same. I think maybe it's the same shop fronts with like an added wall. Oh, okay. Or something, oh, and like a few added bits. But I think they reused at least sections of. It would make set, sense, I think. like to save a bit of money, yeah. save a bit of time. Mm -hmm. I always like hearing when films like do this. You know, have you seen like the Disney, the really early Disney? Um, they use like stop motion, like hand drawn animation, and mm -hmm. uh, there's certain scenes, like dancing scenes, or um, the one that I've seen is comparing Mowgli walking in the jungle to Christopher Robin walking in the 100 acre wood oh, right. um, mm -hmm. and it's literally exactly the same they trace over yeah. the drawings and loads yeah. of people are like ah oh, how dare they this is so wrong and rubbish <laughs> and I'm like no actually mm -hmm. I think it's a really clever thing it's quite cool yeah that yeah. you can do to save some money and save some time for the yeah. poor people yeah, working exactly. on these films Mm -hmm. And then it means you can put that money and that time elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, where it's actually important. Like, this isn't important. Yeah. Like, nobody mm -hmm. nobody actually cares when they're watching the movie. Like, that's what Christopher Robin did. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And the same here. Like, if it is redressed, mm -hmm. just diagonally, I just really appreciate, like, knowing little tidbits like that. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me at all. And I think it makes sense because in my mind, Nocturne Alley is just like dark. dark. Yeah. Like it's the same street, it's just a little. I always off, imagine um, it like um, it. Diagon Alley is just one big kind of long up and down street with maybe a, yeah. a curve or two. Um, yeah. But Nocturne Alley is very, very like S, almost S shaped, like crooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, like just going off in one corner yeah, of, like the, lots of, of Diagon Alley. nooks and crannies where people are hiding, yeah. ready to pounce yeah, yeah, out yeah. at you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from that, 
um, the same vibe, like trinkets everywhere mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. And I really like the the style of shop fronts that they use mm. in both places of like the kind of you know that the curved windows with all the little yeah glass panes. It's really yeah. Cool. Again, like I think I said, uh, I can't remember when I said this, but um, it's a testament to how good it is. I think last time when we mm. talked about the burrow, that it just doesn't change at all because usually yeah. like with hogwarts castle that's changed a lot because right. it was rubbish <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but it was so good that they didn't and have then, to change it yeah with and then with hogwarts even like since changing to like a more established it hasn't kind of, changed uh, since the layout yeah. it's it's they've added bits on yeah but they've added bits on in a way that feels like they could have been there the whole yeah. time but you just haven't seen them yeah yet. like the owlery i think was one of those and the yeah. boathouse and like the big bridge yeah and, yeah the boathouse exactly uh, and it's like oh, yeah of course you haven't seen the boathouse before we just haven't been yeah been there you know yeah although that yeah. bit did jar me i don't know why it really annoyed me when i saw the boathouse <laughs> <laughs> i was like it's more the boathouse yeah. what is this yeah yeah anyway that's four <laughs> 50 <laughs> episodes <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, I'm, I really like the Marauders map section of our episodes. I always learn something new. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that is just... I, I've not found... I've been looking through all my books, like behind yeah. the scenes books and location books. I think maybe... We were just told at the studio yeah, a long time. We have been told a lot and of I... things at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, if any of you listeners go to the studio tour, maybe you can ask. Because mm, the people yeah. there are always extremely eager to talk to the yeah. to the people doing the tour. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was a fairly short episode, wasn't it? Mm. But. <laughs> I guess that's all we need to say. <laughs> there, there really isn't many differences. There aren't many differences in Chamber of Secrets. Mm -hmm. So it is objectively the best film of the whole franchise. It, it, well, yeah, in terms of <laughs> adaptation, I think it probably will amount to be one of one of the best. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, like even comparing it to the first one, it's yeah. it smiles better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I never watch it. I I Sorry. watch it sometimes, <laughs> mm. but yeah, it's usually the it's usually from three onwards. It's like two, three. It's two, three, four, five, eight usually. Ah, uh, yeah, we usually watch seven or eight, and then uh, probably yeah six seven and eight we we watch quite a lot because roman usually asks mm. for those ones mm -hmm. we usually skip seven. Oh yeah and six. Oh, i really like well uh, i like six and i don't like six the, the, yeah. the no, atmosphere I, is really I weird I watch, at six. whenever i watch half blood prince i'm like this is, this is really great why don't we watch this one more but for some reason yeah. we just don't yeah but I, I love three, four, and five as well. Mm -hmm. Three, three is the best by far. Like just as a, anyway, we'll, yeah. we're, we're <laughs> getting ahead but... of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so that concludes this episode of Potter Watch from page to screen. Keep twiddling those dials. Keep each other safe. Keep faith. Good, Good night. night.